Hello everyone! Today we're talking about another facet of the evolutionary process where different organisms find ways to achieve the same goal. Let's jump right in. One common misconception that people have about evolution is that natural selection makes organisms perfectly adapted to their environment and or progress towards a predetermined goal. But evolution by natural selection more often works with good enough solutions and it also doesn't plan ahead. As species continue to diversify into more species, some of them might stumble upon new niches to occupy and they adapt to fill in those niches by modifying their characteristics. Sometimes, multiple lineages find themselves under similar conditions independent of one another. Similar conditions often promote similar selective pressures, which results in these different lineages evolving similar features. I'm talking about convergent evolution. Convergence can be achieved phenotypically, genetically, or behaviorally, and we'll go through some examples of each. Now understand that convergent evolution isn't problematic for evolution, as some people seem to think. Intelligent design creationism certainly couldn't make any sense of it. Take one of the most familiar examples of convergent evolution, fish and cetaceans, or whales, both having similar streamlined body shapes with flukes and fins or flippers that allow them to move through water fast with minimal resistance. Why would a designer design a wide array of fish with gills and fins and also design whales with lungs but no gills and make their internal structure more like those of terrestrial mammals, having digit bones that are fused at the joints inside their flippers that look eerily familiar? Different design, different designer? In light of evolution, however, it makes perfect sense that organisms would evolve, for instance, similar body plans in similar environments. And why wouldn't they? They're exposed to similar selective pressures. A key evolutionary concept to bear in mind, especially when thinking about convergent evolution, is that the species in question are adapting a trait to better fit their environment from their existing phenotype, not starting from scratch in the way a designer would be able to do. As a result, while species that have convergently evolved may superficially seem to be similar, it is still usually easy to tell that they have independent origins thanks to the morphological signatures of their different ancestors. Look again at the cetaceans, the whales and dolphins. While they may superficially resemble fish in that they have streamlined bodies, tail fins, etc., the mammalian origins of cetaceans are obvious in the many more traits they share with mammals instead of fish. This mammalian origin also influences the nature of the convergent traits. Fish swim by moving their bodies from side to side, but mammalian spines evolved for terrestrial locomotion, and their spines can't move very well from side to side, laterally, Instead, they bend up and down, dorsoventrally. Constrained by their mammalian spines, as cetaceans evolved undulating swimming, they were forced to do so vertically, which is why they have horizontal tail flukes as opposed to the vertical tail fins of fish. But there are other examples of convergence that are more extreme, such that they will appear to be closely related at a first glance, but aren't after we take a closer look. Take the anteater, pangolin, and aardvark, for example. All three have converged on body plans involving long snouts and digging claws because they all specialize on consuming ants and termites. They were once classified together in the taxon Edentata. However, it turned out that these three aren't closely related. Ant eaters are a member of the clades Anarthra, along with armadillos and sloths. Pangolins are Laurasiatherians, closely related to carnivorans. And aardvarks are aphrotheres, sharing a close relationship with elephant shrews, golden moles, and tenrix. If this isn't the result of evolution, then the creationists need to invent an explanation as to why three unrelated animals were all designed similarly. Since they're in different superorders, I imagine creationists would agree those are different kinds. Cichlid fish in the two African crater lakes, Lake Malawi and Lake Tanganyika, are another particularly striking example of convergent evolution. As species in each lake diversified to fill up the available niches in the two lakes, they arrived at extremely similar body shapes and color patterns. The cichlids in Lake Malawi, right, are all more closely related to one another than they are to any of the cichlids in Lake Tanganyika, left. Theropods, avian and not, are yet another good example of convergent evolution. 
Research has indicated that cranial ornamentation in theropods is positively correlated with rapid body gigantism. As independent lineages of theropods developed head ornaments, like the crest of Dilophosaurus or the eye horns of Carnotaurus, they convergently evolved huge size as their clades progressed. Researchers have theorized that sociosexual display drives this increase in size. One very good but often overlooked example in arthropods is the polyphyletic group of crabs, which have evolved independently at least five times, so many times that it got its own name called carcinization, not to be confused with carcinogenesis. King crabs are often thought of as being derived from hermit crabs, which confusingly aren't true crabs. Evidence of this exists from the fact that the abdomen of hermit crabs are asymmetrical, which allows them to fit inside the spiral shells of mollusks that they scavenge. The abdomens of king crabs are similarly asymmetrical, but they don't use shells at all. Once again, even though convergent evolution has made king crabs very different from their hermit crab ancestors and more similar to other crabs, they still bear the stamp of their hermit origins. Convergent evolution has also famously occurred in bats and cetaceans. Some, but not all whales, and some, but not all bats, use echolocation to identify prey in their environment, but they have different anatomical structures for using echolocation. Most echolocating bats emit sound from their larynx, but cetaceans pass air through their phonic lips and focus the sound waves using an organ on their forehead called the melon that functions as an acoustic lens. I say most bats because bats have independently evolved echolocation several times. Many of these so-called microbats are collected into the clade Yangochiroptera, while some are more closely related to megabats, which are part of the clade Yinterochiroptera. Hope you spotted that yin and yang. There is even one megabat that echolocates, Rusetus aegypticus, clicks its tongue to generate the high-pitched sound. As a side note, Richard Dawkins' book, The Blind Watchmaker, excellently explains how a complex system like echolocation could evolve. Now, how anatomical structures are made is dictated by genes, and this is where things get strange for bats and cetaceans. Despite having two very different structures for echolocating, the same protein is involved in hearing those echoes, Preston. Preston is a motor protein in outer hair cells of the cochlea, which is imperative to sensitive hearing in mammals, and it has been independently modified, some might say it convergently evolved, in both lineages to be useful at detecting extremely high-pitched sounds. And this is just one example of genetic convergence. Now, this example of convergence at the molecular level is one that is grossly distorted by ID creationists as they present this case as something that doesn't fit with the evolutionary framework, because they claim that Preston genes of echolocating bats and whales are more similar to each other than either of them are to their supposed close relatives that don't echolocate, which seemingly goes against the notion that genetic similarity is the result of common descent. However, this is not true. The nucleotide sequence of the Preston genes of both echolocators are still more similar to other members of their respective groups. The ID creationists are misrepresenting the results of several studies, which found that in some, but not all, places along the amino acid sequence of the Preston protein, the echolocators shared the same amino acids that are different from their respective relatives. Saying that this demonstrates that there are more similarities between echolocating bats and whales is cherry-picking, and it ignores the relevant differences between comparing DNA sequences of genes and comparing amino acid sequences of the protein products, because it is possible for very different DNA sequences to produce similar proteins. Another recurring example of genetic convergence is a negative one, the inability to synthesize vitamin C or ascorbic acid. Some species of bony fish, birds, and bats have lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C, as have the haplorine primates and guinea pigs. Haplorine primates, including tarsiers, old and new world monkeys, and apes, lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C in their common ancestor somewhere between 60 and 65 million years ago, either at the end of the Cretaceous or early into the Paleocene. The remnant of the gene that made it possible is gulo, which we discussed in the video Genetics. Guinea pigs, on the other hand, lost the ability much more recently, about 14 million years ago, according to the 2011 paper, Inactivation Dates of the Human and Guinea Pig Vitamin C Genes. There are numerous other examples of convergent evolution in organisms. Different clades of fish have independently evolved antifreeze glycoproteins, 
three species of the garter snake genus Themnophis have independently evolved defenses against tetrodotoxin and their prey. The pitcher plants Cephalotus follicularis, Nepenthes alata, and Saracenia purpurea have all achieved molecular convergence with regard to their carnivory, such as the enzymes produced by the plants to digest their food. But even non-carnivorous plants like Arabidopsis thaliana have homologous genes for those enzymes, which are expressed when the plant is stressed, implying that those genes for carnivory are descended from stress-responsive proteins. Not to mention that lemurs and humans have both convergently evolved blue eyes, opposable thumbs have repeatedly popped up in mammals, sometimes not actually being thumbs, like the pseudothumb of pandas, which is a modified sesamoid bone, and there are many, many more examples. There are even examples of behavioral convergence. Intelligence has evolved independently in several different lineages to varying degrees, such as primates, cetaceans, elephants, and corvids. So, in other words, convergent evolution is very common. Similar environmental pressures can result in similar looking or behaving organisms, but those isolated convergent features won't erase the history of their independent lineages, which are visible when you look at the whole organism. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.